Good evening, everyone. Do you know how many people are in prison? Over 85,000 people, nearly the size of the bath. 30 years ago, it was only 40,000. And do you know that of the 85,000 that are in prison, nearly half will reoffend when they come out? So tonight, when we talk about breaking the cycle of crime, it's not what we could do, it's not what we should do, but it's about what we must do. We cannot continue doing the same thing time after time and expect a different result. We can't keep putting people into prison and expect that they will come out and not offend. So we need to do something different. We need to, for the sake of the victims, for prisoners, families and children. So I'm Sue Mount Stevens. I'm Aidan Somerset's first Police and Crime Commissioner since 2012. I was a magistrate for 15 years and I spent four years on the Independent Monitoring Board at Bristol Prison. And tonight I will talk about how we can do things differently and particularly about two schemes in Aidan Somerset focusing on drugs education and women offenders. How the Chief Constable is leading the way in predictive analytics and how a variety of great organisations are delivering amazing <coughs> opportunities. I'm a mum and I'm a grandma and I care about my family being safe. I care about my neighbours being safe. I care about our communities being safe. <coughs> I care about victims being safe and feeling safe again, and I suspect you do too. But I've seen how crime destroys hope, destroys opportunity, destroys life. And these are some of the reasons that I ran for public office. The reason that I put my head above the parapet to be Aidan Somerset's first police and crime commissioner. From my time as a magistrate, I remember the fear in people's eyes when they stepped into the courtroom. The dread from victims as they had to relive the horror and repeat their story yet again. But I also remember the blank faces of those defendants that were being put into custody. I remember the very first time that I stepped out of Bristol Prison and I walked down Gloucester Road. I could smell the fresh air. I could almost feel it. I took that smell in and thought of the people that I had just met who were still inside. If you've ever been in a prison, you will know that it has its own sound, its own chorus of clanging, of banging, the clattering of keys and the slamming of doors. Through every sense, you know you are incarcerated. You know there's no escape. And prison shouldn't be a holiday camp. It's a severe punishment. But what is prison for? It's there to take away a person's freedom as a punishment for breaking laws. It's there to keep dangerous people off our streets and to keep our communities safe. It's there as a concrete built reminder of the consequences of committing crime. But none of this is prison's purpose. The purpose of every prison should be that when each prisoner is released, they are less likely to commit offences when they come out. We should be trying to ensure that people that come into prison do not come back. Because we need to remember, 85,000 people are in prison today. And why is this? I would like to propose that we are not doing enough to help prisoners get the skills they need to fit back into society as law-abiding citizens. Because when you're inside, you are on somebody else's timetable. You cannot make a cup of tea when you fancy. You cannot make what you want for dinner. You cannot tune into your favourite TV programmes. And above all, you cannot think for yourself. Day in, day out. People become so powerless inside that they forget how to think for themselves when they come out. 
They forget how to do things for themselves. Many people come out with low to no self-esteem, respect or hope. I met a young man whom I'm going to call Sam tonight. And I will talk about him several times because he left a profound impression on me and I want to share it with you. He had been in and out of prison since he was 14 years old. Some of the times he couldn't even tell me how many times he'd been in, into prison because he'd been in and out so often. He's now in his 30s. He's never experienced any respect in his life. He's never experienced people listening to what he had to say. He was so low that the very first time we met, he said, are you sure you want to sit next to me? This is shocking. This was a man who had left prison, who had served his time, who had paid his debt to society. He was working, he had somewhere to live, but he did not think he deserved a second chance. Now trust me, people in prisons do have hopes and dreams. They have made profound mistakes, but they are people nonetheless, just like you and just like me. And they need our attention, they deserve our attention. We need education and employment programmes in prison which can reach out to people and give them a choice, the opportunity to take a different path. Like Sam, we have all made mistakes, each and every one of us here, and most of us have been given a second chance. This is about being smart in order to make sure people can recover from their mistakes. But it's not about being soft on criminals. We have some excellent projects which are supporting people to earn their second chance. Tonight, the Life Cycle Project, working out of Bristol Prison, have kindly displayed some bikes in the room, you'll see them dotted around and each tells a story. Please take time to go and read those stories. Lifecycle takes donations of unwanted bikes from local people and teaches prison, prisoners the mechanical skills to strip down, to repair and rebuild. Sometimes I wonder if that's what we should do with prisons too. Once fixed, these bikes are sold on at affordable prices to help people on lower incomes to get a bike, start cycling, and reduce their transport costs. They can also gain a sitting guild's accreditation and qualification, and they, some of them will also be able to gain employment as bike mechanics. I've spoken to prisoners who have been given a bike. <coughs> this is their personal bike which they have repaired themselves, and I've listened to their pride and achievement that they own this bike. Chief Executive Aileen Edwards, aunt, who's on the panel, is from the mental health charity Second Step and she joins us here tonight. Second Step is using their experience working with Bristol's homeless community and people with complex needs on a big lottery funded programme called Golden Key which aims to open doors and create new futures for offenders and people with multiple needs. <coughs> I'm further delighted that the renowned poet Mr Jean has joined us this evening to talk to you about his work bringing poetry into prison. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Mr G, and I suspect most of you are, he has a unique ability to express the rawness of life into the written word, spreading his message with those who need it most. And you will also hear from the Chief Constable Andy Marsh, who will tell you more about the future of crime research work and how the use of big data can help us to identify patterns in the way criminals behave and prevent crimes from happening in the first place. But let's just take a minute and think about the effects of prison, how it rips through families, communities, and tears <coughs> generations apart. <clears throat> Having a criminal record disqualifies you from being a full member of society, even when you've paid your debt. As a consequence of a mistake, you can end up in a cycle of crime. The prospect of recovering Contributing to society, being an active citizen, is remote. And we have tens of thousands of people who are not getting a second chance. Sam, the man, the man I mentioned earlier, he works for Timpsons. And Timpsons have been given ex-offenders a second chance to be since the early 2000s. And it's not easy. James Timpson will openly talk about the mistakes he made in the early days and the things they have learned as a company for the process. 
But breaking the cycle of crime is hard work. It's hard work for the offender, and it's hard work for those working with the offender. Because if it was easy, we'd have got it right by now. And we haven't. Timpsons work with about 70 prisons in the UK. They have a number of colleagues going around prisons interviewing and mentoring. And they have three academies where prisoners can learn the trade. James jokes in the beginning that he had to persuade prison governors that he was only going to teach offenders about shoe repairing, not about key cutting. <laughs> <laughs> and other companies are following in their footsteps and giving ex-offenders a second chance, such as Virgin Trains, Boots, Greggs and MS. Sam, the man I mentioned, it was the little things that made a difference to him. The fact that Timpsons can give a deposit for a flat so you can have a roof over your head. A dry clean suit for your first interview. An alarm clock to get you up in the morning. These small things, because when you've been in prison, you have forgotten to how to think for yourself and how to do things for yourself. But this is not about being soft on criminals. This is about being fairer, smarter, and more effective. We also need prevention programmes which can reach out to people and give them a second chance, the opportunity to take a different path. Let's just talk about how Aileen Somerset Constabulary is giving a second chance. I will begin by reading you a headline from the Daily Mail a few days ago. Quote, Police force lets off cocaine and heroin users. Top officer denies being soft on drugs after force stopped arresting suspects. This story is about an approach that police decided to take with those people who were caught in possession of drugs, including Class A drugs, onto an education programme rather than immediately criminalising them. Each year, drug addiction costs our society over £15 billion. Pounds. Any heroin or crack user not in treatment to committing crime costs an average of over £26,000 a year. The Drugs Education Programme pilot, run with Swanswell, the national drug and alcohol charity, is an innovative way of dealing with people found in possession of drugs. It's a chance to change a person's behaviour and reduce the likelihood of them committing further offences. It's a chance to provide a pathway for vulnerable drug users to get support. And it's a chance to reduce drug-related crime in our community. And this second chance only happens once. You get one chance to take this education programme. Because if you fail to attend or engage, you'll be prosecuted for the original offence. And in the short time since the pilot began, over 400 individuals have taken part in the scheme. And this is the important bit. Not a single one has gone on to commit a crime. So this leads me to the question, is prison really the best place for people who use substances that don't commit crime or violence? According to Her Majesty's Inspector of Prisons, just under one third of prisoners admit that it's easy to get drugs in prison. I think with spice and psychoactive substances, I think it's higher than that. And in fact, it is estimated that maybe up to 90% of people in prison use spice. So this program, this drugs education program, tries to reach people before that month, before a caution or a conviction has taken its costs on their lives, lost in their job, broken their family, put them on a road, it's difficult to get on. I believe that it's vital that the police and the criminal justice system have a range of measures available to them to prevent drug use. But that they also have the tools to deal robustly with serious and repeat offenders who cause the most harm in our communities. But let me repeat, it's not about being soft on crime. It's about offering a choice. I've spoken to prison chiefs, judges, magistrates, police officers, politicians, families, victims of rape and abuse, support workers, coaches, and people working on new solutions. <clears throat> and we are all finding new solutions to problems that we face as a society. So let's just take also a few minutes to talk about women offenders 
This month, we relaunched SHE, a scheme designed to divert women from the custody and criminal justice system and help them get support. SHE stands for Support, Help and Engagement, and will move women away from the path of prison to help them tackle the root causes of their offending, which often ranges from drug and alcohol addiction to, de to debt and domestic abuse. In the past seven months, nearly 3,000 women were brought into custody in Aiken Somerset. And you may ask why the police focusing on this when women only make up 20% of all offenders and 5% of the prison population. And I would say to you, because the root causes of their offending can often be far more complex. I was told only last week by the governor of Eastwood Park, the prison for, for, for women, is that 80% of women in Eastwood Park are victims of domestic abuse. 80%. National figures show how in 2010, over 17,000 children were separated from their mothers by imprisonment. And some will have lost also their family home. So let's just think about that. They've lost their mum, they've lost their home, and we are surprised at the consequences. In addition, the cost of detaining a woman in prison is up to £46,000. Compare that to £1,500 in a community-based centre with better results. So if this new scheme is successful, we could divert hundreds of women from prison during the first year. This would have a significant impact on reoffending. It will reduce the emotional and support and social impact on children and families, and it would ultimately result in financial savings. The SHE scheme is only possible because the police are working with phenomenal agencies such as the Prison Reform Trust, the Nelson Trust, the Eden House Project, who will be the pilot hub for the women at risk. We're very privileged to be in Bristol, and we have excellent community services such as the Bristol Drugs Programme, the Sanctuary, the Greenhouse, the Restore Trust, the Golden Key Project, Second Step, Catch 22, and many more. And I would like to very publicly thank you for all that you do. And in a few moments, you will hear from the Chief Constable, Andy Marsh, how the Bobby on the Beat is here to stay in England and Somerset, but they will be more targeted, more specific, more walking, and more cycling our streets, but using good data they will be more effective because that is vital in today's policing. So let's be clear, if it was easy to break the cycle of crime, we could have got it right by now. We haven't, and it's worthy of greater attention. People who are at risk of offending deserve our attention. People in prison deserve our attention. People who come out of prison deserve our attention. They need our attention. Because if we get this right, it means fewer crimes, less money spent on prison, less reoffending, less wasted taxes, fewer police arresting the same people again and again. We will all feel safer and the next generation will see what it's like to be part of a society when sometimes things go wrong and wrongdoing is committed. But there is a second chance and there is a future. It's people we have to invest in and we have to do it right now. <coughs>